friends, it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. Today is a very exciting video. I'm going to be reading five thrillers, all recommended as summer thrillers, and these books were recommended by the author Riley Sager. One of my all-time favorite thriller authors has recommended five thrillers perfect to read this summer. It was in an article from like June 2020. I don't know. I'll link the article down below so you can check it out for yourself. But he recommended five thrillers and some of them were already on my radar anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the books and then I'm going to read them in this vlog and let you know, number one, like what my rating is, my thoughts, if I think you should pick it up, if I liked it, if I think you would like it, and then if I think it's a good summer recommendation. So in no particular order, the first one is Falling by TJ Newman. And this is a debut about um, a person that boards a flight to New York and there's 143 passengers on board. And what they did not know is that 30 minutes before the flight, the pilot's family was kidnapped and he was told um, that for his family to live, everyone on the plane must die. So very simple premise, but love the cover, love the spine, really excited to get into it. Next up is Such a Quiet Place by Megan Miranda. And I do love that it features like a neighborhood here on the cover. And I also just love the colors. Uh, this one is about a neighborhood um, where something happened. I think one of the neighbors um, was suspected of killing some of the other neighbors and we're trying to figure out what happened. Um, this is the one that I'm actually currently reading and it does have this really cool neighborhood map here in the front. Um, I am currently starting chapter three so I literally just started it. Next up is The Husbands by Chandler Baker and this is the same author that wrote The Whisper Network and I actually did gift that to one of my co-workers a couple of years ago and then they read it and enjoyed it and let me borrow it and I actually didn't like that book. I DNF'd it. Um, so I'm hoping that I love this one a little bit more and again it has like that over uh, the aerial view of a neighborhood in the back with a big like flame on the front. So it's kind of giving me like little fires everywhere vibes from the cover. Uh, but this one, how far will a woman go for a little more help from her husband? Don't know much about it, but I picked it up solely based on Riley Sager's recommendation. Next up is Bathhouse by PJ Vernon. And I believe he's actually friends with Riley Sager. I'm not really sure, um, but I have, have heard some reviews on this. But once I saw it on this list, I stopped listening to reviews. Uh, so I have heard mixed things, but um, it's about a man, a recovering addict, and there is a male-male relationship in here, but they're having problems in a relationship. And one of the guys goes to one of these like bath houses and has like, I don't know, an encounter with another person. Um, yeah, and on the back it says, a gripping thriller about how quickly a life can unravel after a single bad decision. So we'll see what I think I do love this cover though like so much and the last one on this list is razor blade tears by s.a cosby love the cover the ombre on the front here and this is my book of the month copy and the brief synopsis for this one is a black father a white father two dead sons a quest for revenge and redemption in this vlog i will be reading all five of these thrillers to see if i can trust riley sager's recommendations yeah he said these would be good summer thrillers now i'm gonna read them and let you know if i think they're good recommendations all right let's get started i'm still reading 
reading Such a Quiet Place by Megan Miranda and I'm really really enjoying it. It's not like super fast paced or anything like that and I don't know if I quite told you what it was about. I'm currently on page 68 so not very far but I am hoping to finish it. Um, now that it's finally the weekend I'm still working. I still have some things that I'm doing. I'm actually transferring a bunch of files off of my computer onto a new external hard drive that I got uh, just because I've noticed my computer slowing down a little bit and we had one hard drive like external hard drive but it filled up and I put my podcast episodes talk book is to me podcast episodes and my YouTube videos on the external hard drive and it has just filled to the max um, plus I try to put pictures on there from time to time so I bought another external hard drive that's just going to be for my videos and uh, podcast episodes and then the other one will be for like pictures, recipes, files, stuff like that. Anyway, um, I'm 68 pages into this and it is set in this small community in Virginia. Uh, let's see what the name of the place is. Hollow's Edge. It's like this suburban neighborhood and about a year and a half ago um, one woman, Ruby Fletcher, was uh, sent to jail for the murder of the other, another couple in the neighborhood, Brandon and Fiona Truitt. Now, the reason why they suspected her is because she was like their dog walker and stuff like that. So she did have a key to their house. Um, and then some of the security footage in the neighborhood showed that she was out late. She was over near the house and stuff like that. So she's been in jail. And like I said, it's been a year and a half and her conviction was overturned. So now Ruby, the one that was the killer, um, is back. And she returns to uh, the house in the neighborhood where she was rooming with another resident. Um, so she's back and no one knows how they feel about it. Even the woman she was rooming with is a little taken aback. Like, what is she doing here? Because she just like randomly showed up like, hi, I'm back. And just assumed that she was still going to be rooming with her and living there even though she sold like all of her stuff I don't know so crazy so I'm just getting into it they were um, their deaths were ruled uh, homicide by carbon monoxide poisoning uh, which is so odd to me because I think of that more as like a suicide thing than a homicide thing but I guess there was some foul play involved um, yeah, so suspicion spreads like a virus across the town. It's increasingly clear that not everybody told the truth about the night of the Truett murders. And when Harper begins receiving threatening notes, she realizes she has to uncover the truth before someone else becomes the killer's next victim. So very, very interesting carbon monoxide poisoning, kind of hoity-toity close neighbors, no neighbors, know all of their business type thing. And I love that it has the map in there. So when they talk about different things in the neighborhood, you know exactly where that resident is located and so forth. So our main character, Harper Nash, is in this house. And this is where Brandon and uh, Fiona Truitt lived. Um, and here's the pool. And here's the little path through the lake. So it has like all the different kind of point points. It has all the different like locations that they're talking about and I really really like it so far. The writing is easy to get through. It's nothing like special or wonderful or poetic but I just I'm really enjoying my time so far so I'm interested to continue in that. The new release from Chevy Stevens, Dark Roads. I'm so excited. I absolutely love this cover. Um, I pretty much have all of her books now except for one. So that one is on my wish list. I'm still looking for that one, but I definitely need to do a new Chevy Stevens vlog. So that should be coming soon. Um, it's definitely on my list. I want to vlog each and every book that I read to share with you guys. That's what you want. Wanted, so that's what you're gonna get but oh my gosh 
you guys this is so pretty and it just sounds so good um, the cold creek highway stretches for 500 miles through rugged wilderness for decades young women traveling the road have gone missing motorists and hitchhikers those passing through or living in one of the small towns scattered along the region have fallen prey time and again and no killer or abductor who has stalked the highway has ever been brought to justice so very excited about that one and the one that we're reading for the podcast is the final girl support group by grady hendrix and i'm very very excited about this i have one other grady hendrix book on my tbr i have read one of them and i'm really really excited about this one because i've heard it definitely does have like slasher vibes like you know, campy slasher vibes. So it says in horror movies, the final girl is the one who's left standing when the credits roll, the one who fought back, defeated the killer and avenged her friends, the one who emerges bloodied but victorious. But after the sirens fade and the audience moves on, what happens to her? So it's about this one girl, Lynette, um, Tarkington is a real life final girl who survived a massacre 22 years ago and has defined every day of her life since. She's not alone. For more than a decade, she's been meeting with five other actual final girls and their therapists in a support group for those who survived the unthinkable, putting their lives back together piece by piece. That is until one of the women misses a meeting and Lynette's worst fears are realized. Someone knows about the group and is determined to take their lives apart again, piece by piece. So looking forward to this one. I have seen a few reviews, but I have not watched them because I want to form my own opinions, have my own thoughts going into that discussion with Jesse. So tune in to Talk Bookers to Me on October 25th, where you will hear Jesse and I talking about this book, discussing it in depth, sharing all of our thoughts and feelings, both non-spoiler and spoilery thoughts. And I will be doing my signature cocktail that I will be pairing with this novel. I do that for every book we read on the podcast. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for now. Like I said, I do have a little bit more work to do. Um, I did get some work done this morning. I'm getting more work done and then we will roll into that weekend. I did want to mention for those that don't feel like reading it physically um, or, you know, don't have the money to go out and buy it. It is a available on Scribd. I'm actually reading it and listening at the same time. And I have a link for Scribd in the description box of this video that gets you two months free signing up with my link. So go ahead, click that link and start listening. And then you can discuss the book with me. According to Scribd, I have three hours and 39 minutes left of listening. Um, I logged it into Goodreads and I think I'm like 58% of the way through um, so about 40% left to go I am enjoying it definitely things took a turn that I wasn't expecting at all although I wasn't really expecting much but just like based on the story I thought it was going to be about about one thing so basically you have this neighborhood that is reeling from the return of Ruby and I've showed it several times, but there's a map in the beginning and I'm just learning more about the residents. Um, so you have Chase Colby, who is actually a police officer, but he's on leave right now because of the way that he handled the case of the Truett's death and that investigation and stuff. So you have Tina Monahan, who is like a nurse. You have Tate and Javier, Cora who live beside Harper and Harper and Ruby live together and then you have the people that died and then you have Charlotte Brock who is like the leader of the community type um, and then you have Mac and Preston Seaver they're brothers um, and I guess Mac used to date Ruby but now he's dating Harper after um, Ruby was put behind bars and then you have Margot and Paul Wellman don't really know much about them um, but I do like that it is centered in, it's like taking place in the summer. So, um, I think that that's really cool. And there's like a pool and a lake and they're like teachers at this like college and stuff like that. 
um, very interesting. They just had like the 4th of July. There's like a neighborhood watch because, you know, things are going on and yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, I finished my first book, Such a Quiet Place by Megan Miranda. Um, I'm going to rate it 3.5 stars. I did really, really enjoy it. The ending was slightly anticlimactic, um, for everything that happened. I thought it would be more heart pumping more adrenaline more like shocking but I really did like it it was compulsively readable which I really really enjoyed I definitely wanted to know like what happened who done it what was going on why there were so many like threads out there that were like unsolved um and I like how it did wrap up but at the same time I just wish it was more of like a shocking like oh my gosh ending um, but yeah I definitely want to read more by this author um, I do have on my TBR shelf the last house guest by Megan Miranda and she has a healthy backlist of titles um, and I did post this on my Instagram if you're not following me follow me at lavender mud because um, I wanted people on my Instagram to rate the book cover like one through ten so let me know your rating for the book cover one through ten I thought that would be a fun thing to ask because I'm always interested in what book covers people love which ones they don't I love this one so I'd probably put it at like a seven or an eight for the book cover like one being the worst ten being the best um yeah absolutely love this and um, like I said, I have the one book. So I was wondering like which other ones should I check out by this author? So if you have any recommendations for me, um, let me know in the comment section down below. All right, so do I think this is good to read in the summer? Absolutely, yes. So I can see why this is a good summer thriller. It is set during summertime and I definitely would recommend it, but don't expect anything mind blowing. It's more mysterious than anything else, but it does track with the days in the summer. So you have like June 29th and I think towards the end, August 1st. <laughs> Razor Blade Tears by S.A. Cosby, which was um, one of my book of the months for July. And I am listening to this through the Libby app. I just got a uh, notification that my hold had come through. So here it is right there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and listen to that. That will be my next read. Just a quick refresher. This is about a black father, a white father, two dead sons, a quest for revenge and redemption. And I was taking the dust jacket off and I happened to read about the author right here. And as a Cosby, it says, is an Anthony award winning writer from Southeastern Virginia. That's where I live. So I'm very, very interested exactly where he lives or where he's from. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Should we do like a first sentence? I feel like we should. Ike tried to remember a time when men with badges coming to his door early in the morning brought anything other than heartache and misery. But try as he might, nothing came to mind. Oh my gosh, you guys. This is the second book set in Virginia. I just read the first chapter, read, started chapter two, and it says, okay, despite it being the first week of April, the air was still crisp and cool. Of course, since this was Virginia, it could be raining buckets in the next 10 minutes. Then how does the devil's back side an hour later? So that's two books back to back set in Virginia. Ah, that's so cool. I did read some outside earlier. It ended up being a lot warmer than I thought it was gonna be outside. Very sunny today, which makes me sad because I wanted to go to the beach all week, had all the time in the world, and then this week when I couldn't go, beautiful day. However, I got some reading done outside in the sunshine. I made it to chapter 20, page 111, and guys, wow, these dads are 
over the top, shall we say. Um, yeah, they are taking no crap once they have decided that they are on a war path to figure out what happens to their sons. They are definitely not playing around. There has definitely been some violence, some death, some disposing of bodies. Um, and now because they got the one guy and one guy went back, the gang of those people know about the one dad because his uh, lawn care company truck is the one that the other guy saw. I don't know if it's all making sense. Basically, now it's gonna be like a war between these people and the dads trying to find out what happened to their sons and I am just like, whoa. All right guys, I'm here with a reading update. I just finished a razor blade tears and I'm here to share all of my thoughts. This book was a ride. It was like a fast paced action movie. I would not be surprised if this actually gets um, optioned for either like TV or movie. I think it would be better for a movie because they would have a little bit bigger of a budget and it is a complete story. Um, so if they do decide to, you know, make it into a TV or a movie, I hope they go the movie route. I have no idea who they would cast to play these characters, but I'm sure they would do amazing. This book, I don't know, it just had like everything. It had humor, it had gore, it had thrilling moments, it had sad moments, it had like family moments, friendship moments. Um, it just had everything that you could possibly want in like an action packed thriller. Um, the premise is these two dads that have lost their sons that were married actually, um, gay sons that were married and now they're trying to figure out exactly who killed their sons and take that person out those that person or persons out uh, basically kill them and both of the dads have former like records um they've both been in jail before but the one dad ike is now on the up and up he you know is living the straight and narrow life he has a business he's making good money like his life seems great until his son, of course, gets killed, and then the other son's father, Buddy Lee, um, contacts Ike, you know, after the funeral and stuff like that, and says, we need to go find out who did this to our boys. Um, and neither father had a really good relationship with her son um, because of them being gay, and of course, they regret it now. Um, but yeah, they're seeking revenge and it gets graphic. There's a lot of death like on page and it's gruesome and graphic. Um, there was one thing that kind of like rubbed me the wrong way. I was listening to it on audiobook um, using the Libby app from my library and there is a lot of cussing in here. Um, I mean, sometimes it felt like unnecessary but at the same time, it was like the situation almost called for it or, you know, if there was ever gonna be a situation for it, <laughs> those were the situations. Um, and they both just seemed to have like potty mouths in general. But the one guy, Buddy Lee, was freaking hilarious. Like he would say these lines and I would just be dying laughing because they would be in like these really intense moments, but it would be like how he was talking to somebody and I would just be cracking up. Now, one of the fathers is black, so one family is black and one family is white. Um, and so there is a lot of discussion about race and privilege and things like that. And the one um, white father, Buddy Lee, had a lot of like built in from his like how his family raised him and what he heard growing up and things like that so ike says it's easier to keep your head in the sand than it is to try to see things from somebody else's point of view there's a reason why they say ignorance is bliss and buddy lee says so you think i'm a racist i think maybe for the first time in your life you're seeing what the world looks like for people who don't look like you i mean you're still ignorant as hell but you learning but then so am i we both learning we both done 
said and did shit that we wish we could take back. I think if you figure out at one point in your life that you was a terrible person, you can start getting better, start treating people better. Like as long as you wouldn't laugh at that joke now, I think you'd be on the right road. Same as if the next time I get offered a drink and don't go the hell off and just walk away instead of jacking someone up because they had the nerve to think I was in a gay bar to meet somebody. So there is a lot of discuss about like the LGBT community, about racism, and just kind of like what all that means to someone that is not used to that, doesn't have those experiences in their life. And I really did appreciate that discussion because Buddy Lee was very, I want to say like ignorant, but because of his relationship with Ike, he started becoming self-aware and he would say things and Ike would call him out for it. So I really did appreciate that. So there were like, like I said, like the cussing was a little bit like, ugh. and I really think that was like the only thing that like slightly bothered me, but in the grand scheme of things, it did not. And I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm really, really torn. I was thinking for the longest time, I was like, it can't be a five star. It can't be a five star. But I think it's a five stars, you guys. Like I was thinking like maybe four, maybe 4.5, but no, I have to give this the full five out of five stars because it definitely had me emotional. Um, things happened, just little small things along the way that would shock me. And there is nothing that these dads wouldn't do to find out who killed their sons and make them pay. So five out of five stars for this one. I think it is a good like thriller recommendation. Do I think it's good to read during summertime? I think maybe the reason why Riley Sager recommended this is because it released in the summertime. Um, and I think in the story, it's maybe um, winter going into spring or something like that. Like I don't think it is summertime in the actual book, but I think anytime you can get your hands on this and read it would be a good time. I could see you reading this any season. It doesn't matter the season. So is it a good summer recommendation? Sure. And do I recommend it? Absolutely. <laughs> up we're moving into our third book and that is going to be Falling by TJ Newman. I actually have the audiobook from this one from Libro FM. Um, I will link them down below and yeah I'm going to be listening to this on Libro and I'm just really excited to get into it. I think it's going to be a very different vibe but I'm hoping that I love this one as much as I enjoyed that one. Prologue happens and then we jump into the first chapter and you just have a family. You're meeting the wife and her kids and her husband so her husband, Bill Hoffman, is an airline pilot. Um, not sure what she does, but she's getting the kids ready. And her husband is going off to do a flight, as, you know, pilots do. Um, but I guess he was supposed to stay home and go to his son's Little League game. He said he would, but then something came up last minute and he had to go on this job. And so the morning of... A repairman comes in like a cable guy to fix their internet and the guy leaves to go off and then as soon as the guy leaves the wife has a gun in her face so then we're following the husband as he is at the airport getting ready for his flight and then he gets contacted by Sam that says I have your family you're gonna crash this plane or else your family is dying and Bill is like I'm not crashing the plane. You're not killing my family. And it's just going from there. Already a wild ride. I'm sure it's going to get even crazier. It's not that long, actually. Yeah, it's under 300 pages. And I am listening to it on Libro FM, which I will have linked in the description box of the video. But yeah, so just wanted to let you know my initial thoughts. It's crazy so far. And I'm not even 50 pages. Just finished falling by tj newman and guys this was another super fast-paced thriller it was also like fairly short uh it was under 300 pages 285 pages and it was super heart pumping 
super like action-packed thriller um, you have this pilot's family that's taken hostage and he's told to crash the plane or his family dies and he has to choose and he refuses to choose he's like no and the guy that has his family held hostage is like no at a certain time you're gonna have to make a choice and just time and time again he's thinking about how he can save everyone on board and also save his family and it's just super crazy and super emotional especially because of like September 11th which is obviously mentioned in this I think probably every like airplane book from now to the end of time we'll probably mention September 11th because there are certain protocols that are in place now because of September 11th um, and those you know came into play in this novel. Um, I'm gonna end up rating this story four out of five stars. I think it is an excellent debut. I will definitely pick up the next book by this author. I'm not sure which direction they're gonna go in because the author is a former flight attendant who worked for Virgin America and Alaska Airlines from 2011 to 2021. So for 10 years, she's been a flight attendant and she wrote this on cross-country red-eye flights while her passengers were asleep. And she could definitely write more like thrillers in the sky. Um, she could even write about like maybe some passengers that were on a plane and um, you know, she sees them on one of the cities they stop in or something like that. And I think that that would be super interesting as well. It's super action packed because there are several moving parts throughout the story. There is, you know, the pilot, there is the flight attendants on board and obviously all of the passengers. There's his family and the person that has kidnapped them and other people are also drawn into this and we get their side of the story. The chapters were short and it mixed it up like which part of the storyline we were following. So it's a super fast paced thriller. I could definitely see reading this like poolside or at the beach or on vacation just because like it is so action-packed it's like you're watching a movie um, I don't know if this is getting turned into a movie but I could highly see it being a movie and being one of those like summer blockbuster like hits type thing I would say if you're on a plane maybe don't read this one because it is kind of scary some of the stuff that they talk about and obviously it's terrifying thinking of being in a passenger in that situation um yeah but super good definitely recommend as like a summer thriller but it didn't really talk about like what time of year it was there was a minor beach scene that happened but it wasn't like beachy at all it was more like oh my gosh um but yeah, so highly recommend this. Um, I think it was a great recommendation from Riley Sager. I am recommending it to you guys. Um, yeah, pick it up. Fourth book is going to be The Husbands by Chandler Baker. And this is the book of the stack that I know the least about. I simply went on Riley Sager's recommendation for this one. I basically purchased this one blind, trusting his recommendation. And so far, knock on wood, it's been good. Right, so this one, The Husbands, I'm listening to on Scribd. I do have my Scribd link in the description box. If you use my link and sign up, you get two months for free. That's crazy. Highly recommend. They have all sorts of audiobooks and it's super, super cheap as like a service. So sign up, two free months, cancel after that if you want, like you do you. But um, I made a big chunk. I'm on chapter 15, page 154. And I am hoping to finish this one today, but I wanted to go ahead and tell you like my basic thoughts and what it's about and all of that. So you have a husband and a wife that the wife really wants the husband to pitch in more, especially around the house. Um, so they've been married for I don't know how many years. Um, they have a daughter and she is pregnant and she's trying to make partner at the law firm. He also has a full-time job, but 
as women do, we wear a lot of hats. You know, we're employees, we're friends, we're mothers, we're wives, and we have to keep a lot of things going on in our head. We have a lot of things to juggle. You know, getting your kids to school and all of their activities. Um, and like I said, she's trying to make partner, so she's really working hard. Um, taking on extra hours, extra projects, things like that. They're also looking for a bigger house. So at the start of the novel, they go to this neighborhood to view this house and it's a really nice house. She really likes it, but her husband's having these reservations. Um, in the meantime, she kind of meets some of the women in the neighborhood and their husbands do all of the things that she wishes that her husband did. You know, help with the laundry, go get groceries, you know, things like that. And my love language is acts of service. So when my husband goes to the grocery store for me, I mean, that's just like him telling me that he loves me. So when people help me out around the house, take things off of my to-do list, it just makes me feel so much freer and lighter. And that is what she is looking for. But on his side of things, he's saying that like he is doing things to help out. And I can see that side as well. It's just not as much as she wants, but it almost is becoming a little bit nagging reading about. I have finished The Husbands by Chandler Baker, and I'm going to rate this story three out of five stars. It's probably my least favorite that I have read so far of Riley Sager's recommendations. It was good. It just wasn't... I don't know. It was just like an average story. There were things about it that I liked, things about it that I didn't. So that's why I'm giving it a three stars. I do think it has good social commentary on the, I don't know, division of labor between what is expected of a woman or what is traditionally expected of a woman and what is expected of a man. And I did talk about this on my podcast today with Jacqueline. Um, and I just said that typically, or like at least in this book, you know, women have to work a nine to five and then come home and run a successful household. They take care of the kids. They take care of the family calendar. They do the grocery shopping. They, you know, make sure that their kids are, you know, bathed and lay out their clothes the night before, pack their lunches, keep up with their social calendar, their husband's social calendar, their social calendar. And it's just like a lot that is expected of women. And sometimes guys don't pull their own weight. And that is the case for our main character in this book. She is, she has a really nice job. She works at this law office. She is up for partner. Um, she has a four-year-old. She's also pregnant. So they're expecting, they're looking for a new house because they're family is expanding and they need a bigger place um and she just really wants more help from her husband um however he thinks that he is helping her he thinks he is doing enough even though that she is clearly stating like you're not helping me enough I need more so um she ends up getting involved with this clique of women that live in this um elite suburban neighborhood called dynasty ranch um she ends up working to help investigate this wrongful death uh case for one of the neighbors her husband died in this house fire and along the way um she notices that the women that live in this neighborhood their husbands seem to do so much more than hers does. So she ends up doing this like, I don't know, counseling and stuff like marriage counseling and things like that. Very interesting. Um, it kind of reminds me of like Stepford Wives, um, but in this case it would be like Stepford Husbands. Uh, do I think it's good to read in the summertime? Possibly. It's not specifically summer related, I don't think. Um, would I personally recommend this? If you like social commentary type books, if you like more of a mysterious type book where you're not necessarily trying to figure out the mystery, I think it's very clear going in what is happening. Um, 
I would just say that it's like slower and the ending wasn't what I was expecting. Um, it was a lot, once things reach ahead in the story, it slowed down immensely it felt like and then the epilogue I was just like oh okay <laughs> so there were some surprises along the way um but it wasn't anything that I could personally say oh my gosh I loved this book definitely read it so three out of star three out of five stars for this one and we are moving on to our last book <laughs> Bathhouse by PJ Vernon. Very excited about this one. Love the cover. This is an LGBT male male um, relationship. Um, and I think one of the men do something. I don't know if they have like a work thing or something like that. But the other guy goes to a bathhouse and does something that he shouldn't. And it's all about that. I don't know too much. I'm going to go in knowing the bare minimum, like I like to do in thrillers. But yeah, I'm going to dive into this one. And I will let you guys know my thoughts as I start reading it later tonight, and maybe a little bit tomorrow. And then I'll check in and let you know my thoughts. Here with a reading update of Bathhouse by PJ Vernon. And I love this pink color. I mean, oh my gosh. Um, I didn't make it very far. Um, I'm on page 56. I am starting chapter nine. These pages in this book are actually like thicker um, and stiffer than I'm used to. Um, but that's fine. Um, I wanted to give you a little breakdown on what it's about. But first, I wanted to show you this. Ra I always get these like books that have like random weird things in them. And I need to do a video about that because I've had books that are like pages taped together like to fix the book. I've had like weird printings and this book and this page I don't know how if you could see it but it's like missing a piece there it's like actually torn it's like a complete hole on the other side you have Oliver and Nathan they are a gay couple they are not married they are dating but they're in a serious committed relationship they wear rings and everything like that um, one I think is a bit older I think Nathan is a bit older than Oliver Anyway, Nathan is a doctor of some sort and he is on this business trip and uh, Oliver is a cheater. <laughs> um, he has cheated in the past and while Nathan is away, he goes to play at this bathhouse called House in Washington, D.C. So that's where this story is taking place. And I guess it's the first time he's ever been here, but it's supposed to be like really anonymous, really safe, you know, all of this. And he goes and he goes to like the bar area to get a drink. There's even like a limit, like how much you can drink and you know, all of this stuff. Uh, so he goes there, he gets a drink and this guy comes up and approaches him as like, what are you looking for? And there's an immediate attraction. So he's going to like follow the guy back to his room. They're going to have sex or whatever. Well, before they even have sex, the guy like has Oliver up against the wall and he's choking him where like Oliver can't breathe. Like he's going to die. And he ends up having his room key or his locker key and scratching the guy in the face, which kind of like stuns the other guy. So Oliver was able to get away. Well, of course, he has these choke marks and these bruises around his neck. So he has to lie to Nathan and say, oh, I got mugged. And of course, Nathan's really concerned, but um, he believes him and everything like that. So we're just in the very beginning stages. I'm only like 50-ish pages in, but yeah. All right, friends, I'm here with my final update. I finished Bathhouse by PJ Vernon, and I had to think about it a little bit because it was somewhere between like a three and a four stars, and I thought I was going to go three and a half, but I think I'm going to give it four out of five stars because I did think it was very thrilling. There were lots of like... I don't know, red herrings along the way. There was a lot of like 
heart pumping moments, fearful moments, and I didn't find myself trying to figure out what was going on. And I think that's what made me enjoy it as much as I did. I could see that like if I figured things out, it would probably be a three star read. But because I wasn't trying to necessarily, and I was just like taking it in, I enjoyed it a little bit more. Now, I won't say like, obviously, it's not a five stars because it didn't like blow me out of the water, but I will definitely be picking up this author in the future. Um, this takes place in Washington, D.C. in early June, so it does take place during the summer. So do I think it's a good summer thriller? Yes. Do I think it's a good anytime thriller? Yes. And like I said before, it is a gay like relationship, a male male um, romance, and it's a thriller. So if you're looking for that, I highly recommend you pick this up. Like I said before, you have Oliver who cheated on his significant other Nathan by going to this bathhouse while Nathan was away on a business trip and he gets strangled in the process. He files a, a police report but then he lies to Nathan and says he got mugged. So he files another police report with Nathan saying he got mugged and he's working with the cops to actually track down the guy that did assault him. So very very interesting, super fast paced. Um, I would sit down and read this chunks at a time. I did finish it over a couple of days but I would just read a huge chunk then put it down, read a huge chunk. So um, it could easily be read in one sitting and it's just over 300 pages. I think it was like 305 pages. So definitely fast paced. And uh, there wasn't any like really slow moments, but I could see the main character, Oliver, really getting on people's nerves. Um, a lot of people have been talking about Survive the Night and how that female main character makes some really bad choices and just like bad choice after bad choice. And she's like, she has so many red flags and she's not doing anything about it. Same thing with this character. He just keeps making the wrong decisions. <laughs> so if you didn't like that character in Survive the Night, you're probably not gonna like Oliver either and even though it is a dual perspective story the majority of the story is told from Oliver's point of view thrillers recommended by Riley Sager there were five of them I read all five and to be completely honest I enjoyed everything that I read so if Riley Sager recommends more thrillers in the future I'm definitely going to pick them up two of these books have male male romances in them so in this one razor blade tears it follows the father of a gay couple on um, the fathers of a gay couple um and then of course like I said bathhouse has that LGBT representation in it as well. Um, so that was like a common theme that I found. And also that sleeping pill Ambien. I believe it was in The Husbands. I believe it was in this one. And I and it was in this one too. So I was finding like common threads throughout. Are there any that you have to read in summer? No, I think these would be great thrillers like any time of year. Um, but the ones that I think especially work well in the summer um, is Such a Quiet Place by Megan Miranda. And that's probably the only one because there's like this 4th of July party that happens. But any of the other ones can literally be read any time. I think that these were picked mainly because they released like this year, obviously. They're all new releases. Now let's go ahead and put them in um, order from my least favorite to my most favorite. Although I think these have something for everybody in them. So just take what I said for each one and judge if you would personally like it. But my least favorite was probably The Husbands just because it was heavily focused on the social commentary rather than it was like a plot or big twists and turns. Next up, I would say Such a Quiet Place by Megan Miranda, but I really, really liked this one. Um, next, oh, it's so hard. Uh, I wish I could put these two on the same spot. But I would probably say, I don't know. Between these two, I really don't know which one would come next. Um, I'm going to put them like this, but they could easily be like 
this as well. Um, probably more like this because this is like four and this is almost four and a half. Um, but the winner winner chicken dinner is Razor Blade Tears by S.A. Cosby, which is crazy to me because there were definitely things that like stood out to me that I didn't like about the story. Like all of the cussing and some of the lingo and the language and stuff like that but I really loved how the dads became friends over the story, even though they were two totally unlikely people to become friends. And I just like how they taught each other something and how they were there for each other through their grief and their trauma and all of that. Um, very, very good story, hard story to read. But yeah, that is my favorite of all of these books, but really like, oh, all of them are so, so good. So that wraps up this summer thriller as recommended by Riley Sager video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I have convinced you to pick one of these up. Let me know if Riley Sager or myself have convinced you to pick any of these up and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. But that's all for today's video. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're all having a lovely day or night and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.